welcome back to my channel i'm trying something a little bit different here um just a slightly different style of content uh, i'm gonna do a bit of a reaction video now this isn't meant to be obviously one of those like um combative reaction videos this is just more observation uh just something i noticed um i was watching a review and i just wanted to basically give my take on it uh, because there were some things which I disagreed with and I think it could be helpful for um, the consumer, which you guys, uh, to basically just get a different point of view and um, maybe different experiences people have had and hopefully it can help you with making this purchasing decision. So today I'm going to be actually be talking about the Apple Watch Series 6. So this is a video by Max Tech. I love his video. He's, he help, he's really helped me personally. He's really helped me by different things to be honest like the macbooks um mac the macbook pro i bought to actually help me start the channel i watched a lot of his videos uh to help me make a decision his ipad videos are amazing um so like i said this is definitely not some sort of uh um beef or anything <laughs> no so it's just definitely i just had a difference of, of opinion in some of the stuff he said so i'm just going to go through the video and then i'll stop it uh at a point where i i kind of disagree and i'll just explain why so yeah, here we go. I've been, using, I've been using Apple Watches since the Series Zero and I've upgraded basically every year. But this year, I'm returning mine. In this honest long-term review, I'll not only tell you exactly why, but also why the Series 6 is by far the best Apple Watch yet and why if you can afford it, you should absolutely buy one over the SE or a discounted Series 5. The Apple Watch has been- hey. So, I guess this is where it kind of, where I, it kind of starts for me. So, he's going to get into the reasons why, and then we can kind of really go for it. But that point where he says he would, pref he thinks you should buy the Series 6 over a discounted um, Series 5, I'm not sure about. But let's see how he explains it. And shocking and shockingly successful and I see them everywhere when I ask people about them They always say that they love their Apple watch the series 3 is still being sold and bought like crazy So how can Apple get people to spend more money on a series 6 instead of one of the less expensive ones? Basically, it's incremental new features and little exclusives that force people to spend more and by the looks of it It's working this year, we have a few new colors, which are really cool. Mine is the product red, and we have the new blood oxygen sensor and the always-on altimeter. Of course, we still have... He mentions three things, basically, which are new. Colors, always-on, um, uh, sorry, slightly bright display, and the blood oxygen. To me, those aren't reasons to upgrade. Of course, if you want a red Apple Watch, then you have to get the Series 6. But... Uh, for me, I, I honestly, I think the used market for Series 5 is the way to go. But let's keep going. Of the, ECG, of the ECG support, and probably the biggest one, is the always-on display. If you need those sensors for health reasons, the Series 6 is absolutely worth it. But I feel like most people don't, and they buy the top model for just one or two reasons. After using the S6 for a while now, I think that most people should buy one, not because of the few incremental improvements, like the maybe brighter display, but for the real world differences that Apple didn't advertise. The Series 6 has killer battery life, way better than before, and I don't know why Apple is not making a big deal about it. On top of that, after two generations, we have an actually new processor that not only allows for this battery life improvement, but super smooth, perfect performance. Now, most people don't care about an occasional stutter with a cheaper watch, but as I was brainstorming and going over comments and contemplating returning mine, something became really clear to me. Most people make buying decisions based on today and not how they will use the product a few years from now, and with Apple Watches, people are keeping them much longer than their phones. I'm seeing tons of people keeping them for three, four, and even five years. When you start looking at it from that perspective, the extra 50 to $100 more from a discounted Series 5 or even $120 more over an SE starts to make a lot more sense. Okay. So here, I do kind of agree with what he said because he's right. If you are going to keep it for four or five years, then yeah, just kind of saving that hundred dollars. He's right. It doesn't necessarily make any sense, right? Because 
you know, you're, you, if you're going to keep something for that long, then you might as well get the best one you can get when you're buying it. Um, my thing is, though, I don't, I don't know. Well, I, I don't know. I don't think people are actually keeping Apple Watches or, you know, the people who are watching his channel or the people who watch my channel, you know, real big tech enthusiasts are going to really keep it for like five, six years. They're probably going to see the new one, the eight. There'll, there'll be one maybe of like three day battery life and then, you know, you're going to swap out um, your watch. So that's kind of where I agree. You're right. If you're going to keep it for a long time and you know it, buy the Series 6 because obviously you want to buy the best one you, you can, the most up to date one to take you further on. But still saying that, if you're on a budget, you're on a budget. So if you can only afford a Series 5 um, discounted or uh, used, I say I still say it's it's on par. They're really you're not really missing out on anything. But he's gonna explain more, so let's get into that. Forget this. Forget the extra sensors or the cooler colors or even the always on display. The Series 6 is going to be a supported and smooth running watch five years from now. And that's something that I can't say for my Series 5 or the SE, which already have some occasional slowdowns. So in terms of the support, we know Apple is going to support the Series 5 for a long time. I mean, if they're supporting the Series 3, I mean, for how long it's been, they're definitely going to support the Series 5. I don't think there's really too much worry. I mean, especially it's one generation between 5 and 6. They're, I don't think there's too much worry. And if you see the actual evolution between 5 and 6, it's not a massive jump. So there isn't really anything that Apple uh, would update for the Series 6 that they couldn't update for the Series 5 at the moment. I think it's just what blood oxygen. That's the only thing. So I don't know. For me, I, I, I disagree there. I don't think there's going to be any issues if you buy a Series 5 long term. It's just if you are the person who wants to buy something and keep it for five, six years, I would just go and buy the newest one. But I don't think you're missing out if you buy Series 5. Um, he's going to talk about battery life. So. On, top, on top of that, we have some features that almost nobody is talking about and that Apple didn't really mention that make it a one thing. So he mentioned about sl occasional slowdowns. I have to be honest, that is in my experience. I have, even with this, even when I had the Series 4, I didn't have any experience of slowdowns on the Apple Watch. Um, it's always been super smooth. They say the Series 6 is slightly quicker, but because uh, obviously it has the new chip. But, I mean, is the average person really going to know that a little bit? It depends. It depends if it's, if, obviously, look, if you're the person who's going to do that, you're going to, you're going to notice it. But I think for most people, the average consumer, I wouldn't be buying a Series 6 because it's quicker. Because honestly, you know, Apple can change the animations on the Series 5 and it will feel quicker. All right, so let's go, let's keep going. Nicer, nicer device. First off, that U1 chip that only the S6 has. We still know very little about it, but based on leaks, it will allow the Apple Watch to not only be very accurately found and maybe find other devices, but support for authentication and for accurate, secure unlocking. Right now, so the U1 chip is it worth getting it just for that? I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say no. The reason why I'm gonna say no is. Because unless Apple in the next um, event in October is going to release a whole bunch of products to support that, then really, I mean, maybe, maybe it's going to make find my Apple Watch um, more accurate. But at the same time, it's a watch. It's kind of always on your wrists. It's, it's kind of, it's marginal gains, right? It's marginal gains. Like I said, that. You know, if you're going to keep it for more than five years, maybe think about it. But nobody keeps tech for more than five years. We know that. It's going to get... The churn on tech, I think, is going to get worse, not, not like, less worse. Um, but let's, let's, let's keep listening. Oh you, can unlock, oh, you can unlock your Mac with your watch, but the U1 will be much more secure, allowing you to unlock your house or even your car quicker and way more securely. Every new Apple device is now getting this U1 chip, so having this in your watch means that you'll be good even years from now. This might seem minor, but notifications are so much nicer and more pronounced than with the older Apple watches. It's still silent, but the vibrations feel twice as strong, and I've definitely appreciated that, especially when using it as a silent alarm to wake up in the morning. Okay. 
So is this helpful? So in terms, okay, in terms of notifications for like messages, me personally, for the most part, I've got most of it turned off for notifications because, you know, vibrating risk can be very annoying. Um, but um, in terms of the power of the vibration, I think it's been fine. I've, I've used numerous smartwatches over the years. And uh, for me, I like the balance of the Apple Watch in terms of the, the vibration. It's not too hard. And it has that little bit of, um, I can't even explain it, this little vibration, which is it's kind of a nice one. It's more of a prod than like a, you know, like a real vibration. Uh, in terms of the silent alarm, the truth of the matter is most people aren't even going to be using this for sleep tracking because the battery life isn't good enough, which we'll get into. Um, but if you do use it and you fall asleep with it, the silent alarm for me is perfect. I like I just I just tried it a few days ago because normally I don't I don't sleep in my Apple Watch, but I tried it a few days ago. And the sign alarm for me, and obviously that thing's gonna vary, right? Everybody's uh, sensitivity um, is different. But for me, it was absolutely perfect. Now let's keep going. The brighter, dis the brighter display in the always on mode, when it is dimmed and when you're outside can be nice as well. I'm saying it this way so you won't get confused. Now, when Apple said the display can be two and a half times brighter, many people didn't understand completely what they meant. Even we didn't when we first tested it. The display brightness is identical to the Series 5 in most scenarios. My biggest complaint with the Series 5 is how much that screen dims in its always on mode, and I wish Apple would let us choose to keep it brighter, but sacrifice battery life. At the okay. So, yes, it is. Well, he basically explains that. The screen brightness upgrade on the new Series 6 is basically non-existent. And yeah, I, I would agree with him in terms of the always-on can sometimes dim quite a bit. But at the same time, battery life. And that's that's really the, the thing. I don't think anybody, well, I wouldn't say anybody, but most people aren't going to want to sacrifice battery life. Because if that thing is always-on, always-on, there's no dim at all you might struggle to get a day. So uh, for me, I prefer just having extra battery life, but let's keep going. We'll talk more about battery life because that's really the crux actually of the video for me. At the same time, at the same time, I do understand why they don't because with the S5, I end most of my days with about 10% of battery life remaining. Now, despite so this actually was kind of the, like I said, the crux of it. This actually was why I made the video because I have the exact same series five um that he has um and i finished a day with 50 percent battery life or maybe like 45 percent battery life never 10 percent so okay obviously um my your mileage is going to vary with this kind of thing um but i just i i really wanted to kind of push back on this and kind of explain a different point of view on this because i think people might see that and be put off by in the series five uh, where they, put, they could potentially um, you know, save a lot of money by buying a new Series 5 or buying a new Series 6. Um, so I wanted to push back on that because I think you can definitely get 40% battery at the end of the day. Um, you can even, like I said, go to sleep with it. Because like I said, I went to sleep with it. You can sleep with it and then wake up. And I think you will have probably about um, maybe about 25, 28% battery life. It doesn't use a lot when you sleep. Um, so it's possible that you can use it when you sleep, but to be honest, then you have to have a way of charging it in the morning. There's no fast charging. I guess you could basically charge it while you're showering and then it maybe can take you up to about 70%. Um, well, it depends on how long you take to shower in the morning, but maybe it can take you up to 70%. But to be honest, I just take it off every night. I don't think Apple just needs to have a three day battery life with always on. That's what you need. Or you can turn off the always on display and then you can get for sure with you with series five, not even series six, you can get two days battery life, which he's actually going to explain for series six. But I'm telling you, you can get that for series five as well. If you turn off always on. 
despite the, large, despite the larger battery in the Series 6, Apple still doesn't let you customize it, and in normal lighting, it's exactly the same. Now let's talk about the most impressive part that Apple won't even admit to, and that's the battery life. It's still rated at 18 hours like my Series 5 was, but there is a world of a difference. Instead of ending with 10% at the end of the night, I now get 35 to 40%. And that's what I'm getting currently with Series 5. So I think it really is just usage varies a lot. So, you know. Other people, have com other people have commented that at the end of the day, they have 50% remaining. Now, let me tell you why having that extra 30 to 40% of battery life can make a world of a difference to many of you and how some of you guys could get double the battery life compared to an SE. Even though I end my day with 10% battery, other than having the display at its brightest settings, I'm not somebody that pushes my Apple Watch very hard. I do exercise, but it's usually not long and it's usually indoors. The times that I have, for example, went hiking, my Apple Watch ends up dying before the end of the day and a few times before I was even done with my workout. If I don't take my charger, I'm without notifications or tracking for the rest of the day. With the Series 6, this will be much less of an issue. And not only that, it charges 20% faster as well. Another benefit. So that is a benefit. It being able to charge 20% faster is a benefit. Uh, like I said, I don't think anybody's really going to, well, if you if you try and get two days out of it, then that's obviously helpful. But if you're not and you're just using it um, morning and then charge at night, then obviously, you know, there's no benefit for um, charging 20 percent faster. Um, he talks a little bit about his usage. Um, he obviously lives in a much brighter country than I do. So I don't know if that affects the battery life in fairness. So maybe. The fact that he lives in a brighter location, I don't know if the always on or the the brightness is, is different in, on his Apple Watch, which drains more battery. So that's difficult to tell. But if you're from the UK, <laughs> maybe maybe that's how I have to frame it. Maybe if you're from the UK or a country that's a lot more overcast, shall we say. Um, even though, look, I'd use this in the summer and I, I, I finish with 40% as well. So... Actually, no, I'm going, to, I'm going to take that back. I use this in the summer, so and I finish with 40% battery life every day. So it's not that. And his usage is pretty similar to mine, really. Uh, indoor workouts and just... I don't have it on the brightest because, you know, I don't think you, you need to. It's bright enough. Um, so usage-wise, it seems quite similar. Um... Oh yeah, let's let's see how you finish benefit this. Is for, benefit is for sleep tracking, which just came out with WatchOS 7. With my Series 5, I have to place it on a charger about an hour before bed, and then once again in the morning, or else it will die a few hours into the night. With a Series 6. So this is a good point. Well, actually, let, let me let me fix. You could charge fix. You could charge it once in the evening, or maybe instead in the morning when you get up and you're ready for the day. And that's with the always-on display mode enabled. So yeah, this is the problem because if you want to do sleep tracking, you can't really do it with the Series Five. Um, he essentially claimed you can do it with the Series Six, but I think the battery life is just basically the same between Series Five and Series Six. I mean, if Apple are saying it's both rate for eighteen hours. He's found that for him, he's getting 30% more uh, battery life than uh, his Series 5. But for me, the battery life he's claiming to get, I already have it. So, I don't think it, I, like I said, I don't think it's worth necessarily getting it for the battery life because, like I'm saying, it's the same. And, what did now, he if say? You're some now, if you're somebody considering between... The point I was trying to make was sleep tracking... Basically, I think sleep tracking is kind of useless. Um, one, because the way Apple have done it is really it's just tracking the amount of time you slept, uh, which I don't know. If you've never done sleep tracking ever before, maybe that's useful. But I've used like the Fitbits. I've used other watches and they give you like way more data. They give you like a sleep score. They give you like our, um, how much um, REM sleep you were in and, you know, the, the whole sleep cycle stuff. So just, just for, for me personally, just knowing how long I slept for is not that great. Um, I think anybody can basically figure that out, even without a watch. So I don't think Apple, um, the sleep tracking is worth it just yet. Um, maybe it will be in the future. And maybe at that point, Apple will have an Apple Watch, which could um, last three days, which is basically what I'm waiting for. 
So I probably won't update my Series 5 until there's a watch that can actually have that superior battery life, which he's kind of claiming here. But I don't think that is... Um, I don't think that's the case because, like, for example, like I'm saying, I finish with 30 to 40% battery life every night. Um, I don't want to ramble too much, but that is basically the main point of the video. I'm actually going to end it here. Um, he talks a bit more about battery life and just rounds off the video. But that's the main point. If you want to buy the Series 6, uh, if you just want an Apple Watch, actually, I would suggest looking at the used market for Series 5, um, whether you want the stainless steel or aluminum versions look at those markets honestly unless for some reason you need a blood oxygen sensor oops, a blood oxygen sensor or you need to have the new colors the series 5 is good it's really good um you're gonna get the battery life that he's saying is worth upgrading for i think it already exists apple's rating it at the same 18 hours so you know I would more favor what Apple have said in this case. Um, and obviously backed up by my experience too. His he be look, maybe you should just try it yourself, uh, five and a six. But honestly, in my opinion, buy the five and hold on to the five, like me, hold on to the five until Apple make an Apple Watch that has more than two days battery life. Because then you can actually do sleep tracking properly. I've had a Fitbit, I've had Samsung watches. You can't do sleep tracking if it's one day um, or, or even a day and a half. It just, it, it means you'll be always be worrying about having battery life. Um, the Fitbits I've had is like five day battery lives, maybe a bit more than that. And you can just comfortably track your sleep. No problem, you charge in the morning, you get 100%, no problem. Apple have to get to that level with the Apple Watch and still obviously have all these features which make it great. Um, so that's my opinion. Um, like I said, it's not beef, <laughs> it's just a different opinion. And um, yeah, so if you find that helpful, um, hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the like button. I'll be making way more videos. And tell me in the comments if this was a interesting style of video in terms of kind of doing a reaction video to a review, uh, was it helpful? And you know, maybe I'll make some more of these type of videos. I really enjoyed it. It kind of gets me kind of comfortable and it's just kind of, you know, in my element. So yeah, appreciate it. And I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.